If you're a children's book author with seasonal books, you've written uh, Christmas books, Easter books, Halloween books, you know, something like that. Should you have your books up all year round or should you unlist them between each annual season that your book represents? That's the question that I want to answer today. And it actually comes from a member of a Facebook group that I run called Children's Book Publishing 101, where, where uh, children's book authors who maybe they're working on their first or second book can come in and they can, can ask simple publishing questions uh, related to self-publishing. And um, by the way, my name is Travis D. Peterson. I am also a children's book author. I am a book designer as well as a self-publishing coach. And so I love to help children's book authors produce wholesome, excellent children's books that rival any book on the shelf and deserve their place on the top shelf in, in bookstores, uh, wherever you decide to sell. Of course, most books are sold online, but if you're like me, you love walking into those brick and mortar bookstores. And so I want to help Children's book authors produce wholesome books that deserve their spot on the top shelf. That top shelf represents like the cream of the crop, the best books out there. And I really want to help authors get there. But anyways, I, I want to talk a little bit about seasonal books. And, and like I said, should they be up on Amazon all year round? Now, I used to work in... Uh, two Christian indie bookstores. They were large bookstores at the time. This was back in late 90s uh, throughout the uh, 2000s. Um, it, was, it was over seven years in total that I, I worked and um, served as a manager in both stores. I was a music buyer, a shift manager, loved working in that industry and working in uh, Christian bookstores. And you know what? We sold a lot, a, a lot of Christmas books, a lot of Christmas materials, not just Christmas, but Easter and, and other holidays. And, and um, you know, in a bookstore, we wouldn't have those seasonal books, holiday books up all year round because you, you have to have that shelf space for other books throughout the year. Um, it's funny because for the Christmas season, we would start putting up like Christmas greeting cards in August, um, Christmas decorations in August, September. Uh, it was just a little bit out of control. And uh, I think we still see that today in a lot of stores putting up holiday merchandise as early as August, maybe even sooner. I don't know. But there are so many different holidays you have to keep rotating. And uh you know what? We don't have to do that through e-commerce. We don't need to do that on our website or on Amazon or other other stores, other online locations like that. Um, personally, I've never written a seasonal book. I haven't published any holiday books. I do have a children's Christmas book in the works that I'm, I'm working on. It's actually inspired by my daughter who is six years old. She happens to be um, hard of hearing, and just like the rest of us, she, you know, you sing what you hear. You don't necessarily sing the right words all the time, and uh, there's there's one or two Christmas songs that she loves to sing, and she loves to sing all the time, and in fact, these songs, she's happy to sing all year round, and uh, there's, there's one song in particular that there's just one line in the song that and even one word in that line that she doesn't get correctly, and I don't even want to correct her because it's kind of a funny twist on the line. And I, I have a book um, based on that incorrect um, line, if you will. And uh, so that's exciting. But the point is today, I would like to give you five different points for why you should leave your seasonal books up on Amazon all year round.
Don't unlist January 1st. Uh, don't unlist right after Easter. By the way, next week is Easter 2024 uh, when I when I am filming this. And uh, so that's that's coming up soon. Um, so why should we leave them up year round? Well, like I said, it doesn't take up shelf space, right? Uh, that's not actually one of my points that I want to make. But let's start with point number one, off-season demand. Yes, it's true. People love holidays even when it's not time for the holidays. Uh, actually, my youngest brother and his wife, they, they actually love Christmas. And I think they would watch Christmas movies all year round if we would let them. Um, and uh, they, they would probably decorate for Christmas all year round. It's just one of those things. They, they love it. And I'm sure if they, if they have Christmas books, they're probably on their shelves all year round. Maybe they read them to their kids. Um, so what do I mean by that off season demand? Well, it's just that it's, it's, uh, it's for that specific audience that doesn't truncate holiday celebration to just when we have those holidays. They like to reread books throughout the year and they don't really care what time of year it is. So that's point number one. Point number two is other related holidays around the world. Now this is a little bit different because um, of course, I don't know of any holidays that are similar to Christmas and I don't know of any holidays similar to Easter, but let's say you have a Halloween book um, about dressing up in different costumes. Well, there are other holidays throughout the world where kids dress up in costume. You have things like carnival um, in, in different parts of the world. Here in Norway, where I live, I'm, I'm an American living in Norway, and, and here we have something called Christmas Book, which is celebrated on Christmas, no, sorry, this is on actually on New Year's Eve. It's called Christmas Book, but it's on New Year's Eve. Kids go door to door, kind of like trick or treat. They wear costumes, they sing Christmas carols, and the uh, the homeowners pass out candy. And I actually love it. I, I actually like that idea more than Halloween because there's not this focus on the dark and scary. Um, some kids, of course, still wear those kinds of costumes, but for the most part, it's it's pretty innocent. And um, yeah, so. My point is that there could be other cultures and countries that celebrate similar holidays throughout the year where maybe they want to buy a book on kids wearing costumes or whatever, whatever the case may be. By the way, if you're not selling your books worldwide, um, you should be doing that. Right, because we can do that through Amazon. They have different marketplaces. You can use Ingram Spark to do that. If you're not using print on demand and you're only focused on selling your own offset printed books from your website, well, you can set up shipping from your website from wherever you live and ship them worldwide. Now, if you're shipping from the US, that can be pretty expensive. Worldwide shipping in general is pretty expensive pretty expensive no matter where you live. It's actually cheaper for me to ship worldwide from here in Norway than it is from the U.S., which is strange. Um, but because uh, most things tend to be more expensive here, but uh, shipping is not one of those things, at least not uh, to that degree. Point number three is gift giving. Like I said, we start putting out merchandise for Christmas, you know, five, six months before Christmas began. It wasn't just Q4. It wasn't just October, November, December. It was October when we put things out. And some stores may be doing it sooner than that now. But online, 
people can buy Christmas gifts all year round. And then maybe they do that. Maybe they just want to go ahead and get it done, pack them up, put them in a box somewhere and get them ready for next year. You know, there's also um, Christmas, Christmas in July. Maybe, I don't know, do people give gifts for that? I don't know. But, you know, um, maybe there's a party or something that they're going to and they want to pass out Christmas books. I don't know. But uh, there, there are plenty of reasons why someone may want to buy seasonal books and gifts way in advance throughout the year. So that's another reason why you should have your books listed all year round. Point number four, educational planning. Let's say your book is a seasonal Easter book, but it's also educational. It's teaching about the Easter story or it's, you know, any other holiday. And it's, it's teaching, it's educational. Teachers are looking for those books possibly before the school year starts um, or before the semester starts or Throughout the year, they're, they're planning ahead. They're looking for material that they can use. Even homeschool parents are looking for material way in advance. So that's something else to keep in mind. And the very last point, and maybe the most important point that I want to make, before we go there, I want to tell you about a free resource that I have on my website, launchmissioncreative.com. You go there now and you can click the tab in the menu for the beta checklist. This is a checklist of 40 questions that I have created for authors to use to, to give to their beta readers to get the most comprehensive uh, feedback that you can get for your manuscripts. You know, most authors, when we ask for beta readers, we might get these sort of fluffy fee uh, answers back from our readers. Oh, that's a lovely book. That's, that's such a, a heartwarming story, but that doesn't really give us what we need for the beta test period of editing and self-editing our books. So I've come up with this checklist broken into seven different categories to help you get a very detailed response from your beta readers. And I actually tested it on my most recent manuscript and it just really blew me away the amount of detail that my readers were able to give me through this uh, list of questions and I've provided that list absolutely free for you. So if you are an author and you are working on a new manuscript, self-editing, ready to go through the beta testing, go to my website launchmissioncreative.com and download that beta checklist. Now for number five, the fifth reason why you should leave your books up all year round on Amazon is for building a fan base. Because let's face it, once it's, it's kind of like eating potato chips, right? You can't eat just one. Well, you can't write just one book. Likely you'll be writing more books. Maybe you'll even write more seasonal books. Maybe it'll be different seasons throughout the year. And so if someone eventually wants to buy your Easter book, and then they see that you also have a Christmas book. They're going to buy them together. Or maybe you have a, a, a book about summer. And they also see that you have a Halloween book. Well, Halloween is, is not long after summer. So maybe they will buy them together. Maybe you have four or five books out and they just want to buy your whole collection because they, they love your writing and your style so much. So it's all about building a fan base. They may be looking for other books by you that, that uh, are for different seasons that they aren't currently in. They just want your material. They want, they're excited about what you have to offer. And that 
that's you know that's something that we all want that's uh that's irreplaceable when it comes to authors we we can't um we can't express our gratitude enough for for readers just salivating over our work right so um so if you're able to sell books all year round um what a blessing that is so just to sort of wrap this up no pun intended uh if you are writing children's books or really any books um, that are focused on certain seasons or certain holidays, there's no reason why you should unlist those books. Keep them listed all year round up on Amazon and watch the sales come in. Yes, you will sell more before that season as it approaches, as that holiday approaches. You will sell more, especially if you're running Amazon ads, which you should be doing. Don't neglect that. In fact, you should uh, boost those Amazon ads leading up to your season or holiday or whatever you've written about um, and, and really maximize your sales before that season ends but it doesn't stop there keep selling the books all year round i hope this is helpful if you find it helpful if you're a children's book author i put out a lot of content and i'm going to be planning on putting out a lot more um, in the coming months here in 2024 and beyond I also host the Coffee and Kidlet Show, where I interview other children's book authors as well as industry professionals to hear their story, why they wrote books, what inspired them, what their books are about, all sorts of things, and, and just providing tips for other fellow children's book authors. So I hope you'll follow along. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell, and uh, let's keep going. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I like to end my videos with this simple phrase, write the book.